Dear friends and colleagues, welcome to the Mangano Digital Academy and welcome back to the essential of digital dentistry. In this lecture, we will focus our attention on the uh, SMOP Swiss Meda software for implant planning. And we will talk in particular about the design of the surgical guide. It's a very important topic. We have several options and inside the SMOP software, we have a, a peculiar guide design that can really help the surgeon to perform the guided surgery at best. At best. Uh, when we talk about uh, digital dentistry, we have, as, of course, as I told you before in, in all our lecture, four different phases. The first phase is given by the data acquisition that is quite easy for the uh, guided implant surgery because we have a combined computer tomography and then we have an intraoral scan. And then we uh, transfer all this data from real to virtual in the virtual world in the uh, software for the planning. In this case, we will talk about the Swiss Meda SMOP software. And then after our planning, after our surgical guide design, we can go to the production of the guide and the model. We can check the fit of the guide on the model, and then we can go to the clinical application, so to the surgery itself. <clears throat> so in this lecture, we talk about guide design, how to design a surgical template in the SMOP Swiss Meda software. It's really interesting what we can do with this software, particularly with the uh, simple cases with the single implant, with the um, uh, partial cases, with the partially dentalous patient, we can have a lot of options. This is how it wor we work usually, as I told you also in the previous lectures, we have a scan phase with the combined computer tomography and the intraoral scan. We use the intraoral scan in most of the cases to collect information, to get that data from our patient in the partially dentalous cases, of course, it's very useful. Then we go to the plan inside the SMOP software. We can perform a virtual waxing, uh, we can prepare the model for printing, then we can match the images uh, exactly, we can superimpose <coughs> and, and, and superimpose the standard tessellation language file from the intraoral scan over the digital image and communication data in medicine, the DICOM from the combined computer tomography. After we have verified and checked <coughs> the accuracy of this superimposition, we go through implant planning. So we plan our implant according to the perfect position, inclination and depth. And then we have the possibility to export all these files and design the surgical template outside the SMOP software. But we can also <coughs> avoid to export this file and we can design the guide directly inside the SMOP Swiss Meda software. It is also a very feasible and valuable option because the, the guide design is a model, a very nice model inside this software that can help the surgeon to very fast, in a very smooth way, design a perfect guide for clinical use. After that, we need to print the guide, we need to print the model, check the accuracy of the guide on the model, adapt a little bit the guide on the model, and then we can go through the surgery. So for the patient, only two appointments, one for the scan and one for the surgery. <clears throat> and uh, here it's more or less uh, an example, some few examples of how we work with the SMOP Swiss Meta software. First, there's the scan with the CS9600 from CareStream Dental. We can use the acquisition software of this machine in order to pre-screen and pre-evaluate the, the amount of bone available in terms of uh, thickness, in terms of bone height, in order to evaluate the bone volume, in order to evaluate if the site can accept, you can receive one dental implant <clears throat> and then after this we can go through the intraoral scan in this case with the CS3700 or the CS3600 like the cases that we did in the past we published also an article together with my professor Oleg Admakin from the second of University of Moscow about this uh, uh, surgical techniques as we can see it's a very simple case a single implant in the SMOP, we have to proceed as follows. We need to import the DICOM data from the combined computer tomography. We need to 3D reconstruct the bone, <clears throat> define the occlusal plane, import then the STL file from the intraoral scan. Then we need to align the STL file over the DICOM file of the CBCT. We can identify some landmark manually. Then the software automatically superimpose the model. And it does very well thanks to the artificial intelligence, thanks to the algorithm of the software. But we need any way to check the perfect superimposition and the perfect alignment in all the multiplanar reconstruction. We can add some manual adjustment in the case if needed. Then we can go through the waxing. We can import the wax or design the wax up 
inside the smooth software as well. We can draw the inferior alveolar nerve in the case of the mandible, for example. Here is not necessary. We can define the, 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 the border of the maxillary sinus, for example, in the case of uh, a maxilla. <clears throat> then we can plan our implant according to the best position, inclination and depth, and then we can design the surgical guide. We will talk about the design of the surgical guide in particular in this short lecture. And uh, here it is what we see after we have designed the guide for this case. The guide of uh, small are peculiar because they are open frame guide, so they are too supported. They are based on these clamps that, that uh, embrace the structure of the teeth and we can regulate the undercuts very well thanks to the powerful tools available in the software in order to have a perfect stability of the guide on the model and also in, in, in intraorally. And we have the, the sleeve and then we can adapt easily the different components and we can proceed with a guided surgery that is a conventional guided surgery with an innovative design of the guide. The advantage of the guide is that they are light, you can watch a little bit more compared to the <coughs> surgical guide conventional that are very big template that cover everything. You can watch and control the adaptation at best because there are these clamps and the guide is open, so it's open frame. And then you can also adapt the, 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 the undercuts in order to have the best uh, fit and the best accuracy and the best stability. <clears throat> and uh, basically everything can be made in a full in office process. In the first cases we use this DWS 6FAB 2000 a desktop 3D printer in order to print with the Invicta rays in the models and also the surgical guide with this resin that is called a DS3000 that is a transparent resin that is absolutely compatible for the use in surgery because it can be sterilized as well and it doesn't undergo big deformation a long time. So if you use these guides in a reasonable time frame like two, three weeks, one month, then they fit very well. So these guides are partial, these guides are light, they are open frame. Uh, you can watch through the adaptation, you can consider and, and check the adaptation on every single tooth. The best thing is to control everything on the model, but then you can <coughs> uh, proceed with the surgery. And the surgery proceeds quite conventionally. In this case, it's a flap surgery according to the concept of the, um, <coughs> of course, uh, uh, the concept of uh, uh, stops for vertical dimension of the drill, reducer, and everything. So everything is quite uh, smooth, quite conventional. You need to use dedicated uh, surgical kits with longer drills. <clears throat> the surgeon needs to follow and fulfill all the steps, but the point is that you can place the implant in a very nicely way, flapless, without any problem. As we can see, we have performed, we have brought this and published this publication together with Professor Olga Mack and Uli Oshin, my friend and technician, on a series of 20 patients treated, partially dentrous patients, with this open frame tooth support templates. And it was really successful, the whole procedure. Absolutely minimally invasive for the patient, it's very nice. The implant itself is inserted through the guide and everything proceeds very smoothly. Here another case, for example, another case, in this case with the CS3600, the scan, the patient uh, wanted to uh, add one tooth uh, in, the, in the upper uh, maxilla on the left, uh, the, the, the first molar, but she didn't want to undergo any maxillary sinus elevation. And um, here uh, we see that uh, there is the space, uh, naturally prosthetic space for the tooth, but unfortunately there was a very little bone <coughs> in this case. So, uh, as verified, but we had the possibility to insert a short implant in this case and we, died, uh, we did it accordingly and the, the design of the surgical guide was performed inside the SMOP Swiss Meda software using the valuable tools for the surgical guide design. So once again, implant planning and design of a surgical guide inside SMOP using the full module of SMOP and with uh, finally these open frame tooth supported guides that are really precise really accurate and really valuable for this kind of surgery. <clears throat> but a very important thing when you work with this guide uh, is that uh, the adaptation, the pre-adaptation of the guide on the model. So it's very important to plan it best. In this case, we could insert a very short implant. It's very important to design the surgical guide at best, but it's also important to uh, print it at best with a full in-office procedure. Here, once again, the XFAB 2000 from DWS system, 
a very good implant, uh, a very good uh, company for a 3D printer, Italian company. Mm -hmm. They are located in Veneto. And uh, um, this is the guide uh, printed in the DS3000 uh, resin. And uh, this is the model. So everything is full in office. In this case, it was printed with the Invicta 917 resin, always with the same machine. And then it's a very important, it's a step that can <coughs> take some time, but it's really very important to check the fit and the stability of the guide on the model before to go to the surgery, because there may be some, for example, undercuts, excessive undercuts that need to be eliminated in order to have the possibility to insert the guide smoothly with the best stability, with the best adaptation, uh, but at the same time uh, um, uh, without any problem, because otherwise clinically, intraorally, we may have some problem, we may have some issue during the insertion of the guide. The guide must be inserted clinically and don't, you don't need to remove the guide uh, until you have placed the implant through the guide itself. So uh, the concept is uh, conventional because you prepare with longer drills according with the conventional concept of guided surgery. So dedicated surgical kit, longer drills, reducer stops, uh, sleeves, uh, the implant placed through the guide, but at the same time it's innovative because the design of the guide is totally different from the guide you see all around in the different software in the market, because in those cases we have full template that cover completely the, the site, we can check easily the adaptation of the guide. In this case, thanks to this clamp test to this design, you can check the adaptation and everything works very well. And really the stability of this guide is super because <clears throat> it's really very difficult to move this guide during the surgery, even during the preparation of the site. And uh, this was the surgery, once again flappers, because we had a sufficient amount of keratinized mucosa. I always underline this concept, proceed flapless only in the case you have enough keratinized mucosa. Otherwise, it's much better to proceed conventionally opening a flap. And with these guides, it's also possible to open a flap. Um, it's possible, not comfortable, but possible. And uh, anyway, if you have the... <coughs> possibility to proceed minimally invasive is better and in this case it was so mucotomy um, we, we remove the, the punch of tissue and then we proceed with the preparation through the sequence of surgical drills reducer and stop vertical stop preparation of the site and then placement of the implant the implant is placed through the guide this is the final position of the implant uh, <coughs> with the uh, cover cap and then with the healing abutment, this is the implant that is very close to the, the, the border of the maxillary, the, 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 the sinus, as we can see in this uh, 2D radiograph, but everything worked very well. We had sufficient stability and then the implant could, was successfully placed. So thank you very much for your kind attention and um, we look forward to, to see you for the next lecture. Thank you.